Hey guys, Tarek Maryface here and welcome to this new series I have dubbed Reading VFR Charts. Today we'll be looking at the French VFR charts. I like them, they're crisp, they're clear, they're concise, and in my opinion, they're better than the Jep ones. So go ahead and check them out in the description below on the SIA website, they're completely free. Today we'll be looking at Perpignan, LFMP. Let's talk about the front page. The front page helps us understand the area around the airfield, helps us see how we should approach it, both physically and verbally when talking on the radio. So the top of the chart is pretty much just a way to identify it. On the left you've got visual approach chart, that tells us it's what we're looking for, fantastic. Then you've got public air traffic, that just tells us that it's open to the public. Great, we don't want to land at a military airfield without meaning to. Right below that you've got 30th of April 2015, that's the issue date. That's when it was released, and if you check the website, we'll find out that's the most recent one to date. And now we've got, to the right of that, Perpignan Rivesalt LFMP. That's simply identifying the airport itself. Okay, so the next section talks about a couple of things. The first is the type of aircraft that is allowed to land at the airfield. In this case, we've got the diagram of an airplane and of a helicopter, so it's pretty basic. Airplanes and helicopters are allowed to land at the airfield. Next to that, you've got position information. First of all, we've got the airport altitude, 144 feet, or 6 hectopascals. That's just talking about the difference in pressure between sea level and the airport elevation. Right below that, you've got the coordinates of the airfield itself. And next to that, you've got the local variation. So this line is pretty much about the air traffic service available at the airport. You've got the ATIS, the approach, the tower on the left-hand side. If departure were available, that would be there too. The really cool thing is that on the ATIS, you've got a phone number next to it. And if you call that number, you will have the current ATIS being patched through to your phone straight away, which is nice because it means you can listen to ATIS even if you're not at the airport. On the right side, you've got all the instrument approach information. So you've got here in this airport, a uh, VDF and ILS DME, which is nice to know. It even gives you a frequency for the ILS DME and which runway it's meant to be used for. The STAP thing is basically the available weather services at the airfield. Okay, so the chart area is actually quite important as it shows us lots of crucial information. The first thing we'll look at is the airspace. Here we see that it's Class D airspace. This is controlled, so it's important to know so we contact them way ahead of time. Another thing we look at is, are there any restricted airspaces? And indeed, there is one R89. Another thing we'll be looking at are the approach and departure paths. Those are denoted by black dashed lines. And in between them, we'll have the normal triangles for reporting points. Some of them are obligatory, some of them are not. And those reporting points are usually denoted by one or two letter codes as they are here. This chart will also show us any sort of hazardous activities in the area, such as ULM or parachuting, or even aerobatics and here again we've got all three of those activities so we have to keep an eye out. Other stuff will show us are any sort of hazardous obstacles such as towers, buildings or maybe even topographical obstacles. This is quite important to see. As you can see the northern area we've got quite big hills so we have got to keep an eye out for those. Okay so this next chart pretty much shows us the traffic pattern. And you actually can identify it by looking at the top of the page just like we did in the previous one. You see visual landing on the top right, which confirms that it's exactly just that. And on the left, it gives us the identification of the airport again to make sure that we haven't mixed it up with some other charts in case you've got it printed out. All right, so the chart shows these lines going towards the runway. Those are actually the flight paths you have to take when approaching the airport. They're very specific and it's usually quite nice to have that just to make sure where you want to go to. This chart only shows the last two turns, but a lot of airports will show you the entire traffic pattern. You'll notice there are numbers on the lines, 1,200 and 1,000. The one outside the brackets, the 1,200, is the altitude you're meant to fly the traffic pattern at. The 1,000 in the bracket is the height you're meant to fly the traffic pattern at. So it all depends about whether you're using QNH or QFE. Notice that at the end of the lines, there is a magnetic heading. That is the QFU, the actual direction in which the runway is pointing at relative to magnetic north. Notice as well that the chart will show you quite a detailed layout of the population around the area and of the airport itself. 
Remember that in France, they are a lot stricter about overflying populated areas, so try to avoid them as best you can. There might be some text in the chart. It's important to look at it, especially if it's in red. In this case, we have a hotspot, and it tells us to look at text 01, which we will do later on. So here we've got the standard runway information table. We've got the runway number, the QFU, the dimensions, the surface type, the strength, that's quite important, especially if you're flying bigger aircraft, and then the TOTA, ASTA, and LDA. Remember, you can calculate some of these. It's really important to use these for your performance calculations. So at the bottom of the page, we've got the lighting information. Obviously, if the airport doesn't have IFR procedures or doesn't allow VFR at night, then it's not going to have this part of the text. All right, the chart for the parking areas. I think you've understood the top of the chart by now. So let's move on to the next bit. So the chart's gonna show you any runways and taxiways that are around the parking area. It'll show any buildings that are relevant to anyone who's arrived at the airport. But most importantly, obviously, it will show us the parking spaces and where they're located. Now the bottom of the page will usually tell you all the type of information that you need to know as an arriving aircraft from outside. Hi guys, welcome to the end card. Congrats if you've made it this far. Click on the subscribe button to my right if you want to subscribe. Below are a few of my latest videos. Also don't forget that I have a website and would greatly appreciate it if you went ahead and had a look. It's not just my content, I go ahead and put there anything that might be of interest to someone who likes aviation. Well, thanks again for watching, I'll see you guys next time, and happy flying.